Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the James Julia Auction House taking a look at some of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming October of 2016 firearms auction. And today, we're looking at something that is probably going to be very familiar to almost everyone who's watching. This is a Kalashnikov, it is an AK rifle. Uh, one of, if not the most common self-loading rifle in the world today. Now this particular one has some really cool history to it, and it's really an iconic example of a particular type of AK. This is a Chinese-made Type 56 AK. It has a fixed buttstock, uh, as opposed to a folding one, which the Chinese also made. It has a spike bayonet fitted under the barrel, permanently attached, flips in and out. And this is the predominant type of AK that was supplied by the Chinese to the North Vietnamese, uh, the Viet Cong, as well as the North Vietnamese Army. So this is the iconic enemy weapon, from the United States' point of view, of the Vietnam War. And in fact, this particular example was brought back uh, after or during the Vietnam War by a U.S. veteran who, uh, what, uh, what he said was he actually saw a North Vietnamese medic with this rifle shooting at Americans. And medics, by international standard, aren't supposed to be combatants. And uh, when he saw a guy shooting at and Americans with this thing, he said, oh, well, that guy's fair game, shot him, took his AK, and brought it home as a trophy. So that's how this thing ended up in the United States. Uh, this was registered. It is fully transferable, which is really cool. Um, AKs are modern enough guns that there aren't necessarily a whole lot of transferable ones around. So this really, and it's in fantastic condition still. This is a very cool example of a, the classic Vietnam War uh, North Vietnamese NVA rifle. Now, to get a little bit more into the mechanical details of this, of course, it operates like every other AK. One of the interesting things about the AK is for all of the millions upon millions, if not hundreds of millions that have been made, they're all basically the same. And all the major types of AKs have, in fact, like totally interchangeable parts. And this stems from a policy by Nikita Khrushchev in the Soviet Union in the 50s and 60s of sharing military technology with like-minded nations. So, the Soviet Union was willing to take its technology, its weapons, specifically, primarily, the AK and the SKS, and they would share the technical specifications and the design and manufacture packages with other countries that shared their ideology. And that is how the Chinese uh, were able to manufacture and, and produce AKs, as well as a great many other countries. Uh, the Chinese, in fact, produced somewhere between 10 and 15 million of this pattern of rifle, the Type 56. It is so named because they adopted it in 1956. Now, interestingly, they also adopted the SKS in 1956, taken from the Russians, and they both rifles are named Type 56. Uh, in fact, this is also a milled receiver AK. Uh, this is the early pattern. The Russians were developing these, or making these, while they were trying to develop their stamping technology to be able to make a stamped receiver for the AK. And that would take them several more years to, to do. In the meantime, take a solid block of steel and cut a receiver out of it, and that'll work. A little heavier than a stamped gun, but made a very reliable and very durable firearm. So the Chinese would eventually also adopt the stamped receiver guns, and to make things a little more confusing, they started making those and still use the designation Type 56. So that applies to kind of everything. Now, there were also, as I mentioned, folding stock models. The, there was an underfolding stock, a wireframe underfolder. That was called the uh, Type 56-1. There was also a side folding stock, which was the Type 56-2. This bayonet was standard on the fixed stock guns. My understanding is they typically left them off of the folding stocked guns because they were trying to reduce the weight a bit. The folding stocked guns had a lug for a normal blade bayonet if you wanted that. But this is very similar to the Chinese SKS. Uh, bayonets as well. The spike is crude, simple, and very effective, kind of like the AK itself. In the hands of the North Vietnamese, the AK was a fantastically well-suited rifle. This was a gun that they're simple to operate, they are very durable, um, they require basically no maintenance. You don't really have to care about this rifle. You put ammo in it, you pull the trigger, and it'll fire. When you're out of ammo, you can just kind of put it away until you have more ammo and shoot it some more. Uh, a lot of the other more modern firearms, they may be very reliable as well, but they often require at least a little bit of preventative maintenance or more understanding of specific details. On an AR-15, you have things like gas rings that 
you know, just little elements that you need to pay attention to. And on the AK, there's pretty much none of that. It is a perfect weapon for a guerrilla army, as evidenced by the fact that it has been the weapon of choice for pretty much every guerrilla army since it was invented. So I think we ought to take this out to the range and we ought to do some shooting with it so you can get an impression for what this is actually like uh, in live fire here at Ron and, and see what it's like. So it wouldn't be a proper AK video if we didn't do some shooting, right? So you'll notice I did all that shooting in the full auto setting. Uh, there is a semi-auto selector setting to this, of course. Uh, run the selector all the way down. It's in semi-auto. The middle position is full auto. Semi-automatic on the AK is there for people who are uh, very competent with it. If you take the time and understanding, you have the understanding, to line up the sights and make good, precise shots, trigger control, follow through, sight picture, all the fundamentals of marksmanship, an AK can shoot extremely well for you. However, that's not really the design intent. The rifle is there, tactically, it was designed as a submachine gun. It is to provide high volume of fire at close range, highly mobile, and that's how it was most often used by guerrilla forces, and that's what it really excels at. So, that's how I was doing all the shooting. Overall impressions are, of course, that the AK is a fantastic rifle. There's good reason why it is the most heavily produced military rifle of the 20th century. It, it just works and gets the job done. It does have some downsides, everything does, but uh, for what this was designed for, it really is a fantastic weapon. So if you'd like to have this one yourself, you are hard, will be hard pressed to find a better example of a Vietnam bring back uh, Viet Cong AK. And this one is fully transferable and it's available. Um, the consigner is actually the guy who brought it back from Vietnam. So you would be the the number three owner after him and after the guy that uh, left it for him in Vietnam. If you're interested in that, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to the Julia catalog page on this rifle where you can see their detailed photos, read their description, and place a uh, bid for it either over the phone or here live at the auction in person. Thanks for watching.